And next we need to configure a MPLS tunnel number three from R1 to R2 with dynamic path option using the following parameters. Okay, so the new tunnel number three is going to have a bandwidth of 300 and it's going to have a priority, a set of priority of three and the whole priority of three as well. No affinity value and the path is going to be dynamic. And now we're going to observe the reaction of tunnel one and two. Okay, so configuring tunnel three, so interface tunnel three, IP unnumber, leadback zero, tunnel destination, R2. Tunnel mode, MPLS traffic engineering, tunnel MPLS traffic engineering, auto route, announce. And the priority we say is going to be three and three. Uh, actually, it's traffic engineering, priority three and three. Then for our bandwidth, it's 300. And our path option, one is going to be dynamic. Okay, so enter that and let's take a look, which do show MPLS traffic TU tunnel three. Okay, so for tunnel three right now with the bandwidth of 3 KB, 300 kbps, priority of three and three, it's currently taking the path through R3, R5, and then R2. Okay, so our tunnel three right now is, let's see if I can draw that with different color. Let's do purple. So tunnel three right now go this way right here. Okay, and that's has the bandwidth of 300. You see obviously right here, previously we have our tunnel two that's going through the exact same path with the bandwidth of also 300. But now that the tunnel three comes along and has the bandwidth of 300, obviously when you have both of the tunnels going through the same path, it will definitely exceed the reservable bandwidth of 512. So what have happened again is the tunnel three has a higher priority right here with the value of three than the whole priority of tunnel two. So tunnel three was able to preempt tunnel two and took over that particular path. Okay, and that's just to demonstrate another preemption process for the tunnel. And if we check the tunnel two, we can see that tunnel two is now on its path option number three because it can no longer fulfill the path option number two. So for our path option number three, you can see right here, affinity value is the one that we, the value that we chose, which is value one and then mask one. And now for tunnel two, two it's currently going through r4 and r2 okay it's just the fact that the tunnel is able to go through those links that means our affinity value is matching those attribute flags value that's been assigned to those links so now i believe i was using green for that so draw our tunnel two right now it's going that way okay and that is tunnel two And the one down here is uh, tunnel three. Let's take a look also at the what's the status for tunnel one. So you can see the tunnel one continues to use the exact same path. And the reason being that when the tunnel three comes along with the set of priority of three, tunnel one has the whole priority of one, which is higher than three. So that's why the tunnel three was not able to preempt tunnel one at that point. All right, so this is where we are right now. So let's go back and see. The next thing that we need to do is to shut down the link between R1 and R4, and, and then we need to explain the status of tunnel two. So what we're gonna do is shut down the link right here between R1 and R4, which is the currently the part of the path that tunnel two is taking. So that would be on R1, fast 0, 1, 14. Let's do shut. And here you can see that the tunnel two went down completely. And if you do show MPLS uh, traffic engineering tunnel, tunnel two, you can see that current operation status is down. And the error that the LSP is reporting is no path to the destination. Okay, so if you go back to the diagram right here, obviously that the tunnel two can no longer take the same path as tunnel one or three because the bandwidth resources has already run out. Why can't the 
1002 will take the path right here up to 1004 through the link between R3 and R4 and then down to R2 using its path option 3 and the answer to that lies on the affinity value because currently our affinity value is 1 and as I mentioned by default the link attribute flag value is 0 so this guy's flag right here let's see if I can make it black flag value is 0 so the way that the affinity value is currently set up which is 1 it says that the for the link to be a candidate in the path, it needs to have a flag uh, attribute flag value that ends with the last bit being a 1. So since the default attribute flag value is 0, that link right there between R1 and R3 is not considered a candidate link for the Tunnel 2 path option 3. Okay, and that's why the Tunnel 2 is not able to utilize this path from R1 to R3, R4, and then R2, even though bandwidth requirement is met but the affinity is preventing it from choosing the link between R1 and R3. So next is another example of how to calculate the affinity or how to come up with affinity value and the mask. Here we need to modify the affinity value of tunnel 2 path option 3 to allow the path of 1342 to be utilized. Okay, and we are not allowed to use the affinity mask of 0 because that would be too easy. If you set the mask to 0, that means you basically tells the tunnel to completely ignore the attribute flags of all the links. And then we also need to make sure that the, we can, the tunnel can fall back to the path of R1, 4, and 2 when the link between uh, 1 and R4 recovers. So we want to basically come up with a new affinity value and mask of tunnel 2 path option 3. That will allow the tunnel 2 to utilize the path both through R4 right here, R1, R4, and R2, as well as R1, R3, R4, and R2. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is to evaluate the attribute flag values of all of those links and trying to figure out the bits that are common on those flags so we can choose the affinity values and mass accordingly. So let me go back to my notepad right here. We have already come up with the bits for R1, R4 link and R4, R2. So next we need to do the two more links. So that would be R1, R3. Since that has a default attribute flag, they're all zero. And then for R3, R4, there will be zero, zero, zero. And for nine in binary is one because that converts to eight. And then one at the end, it makes that nine. Okay, so again, let's take a look at what bits are in common. So those first three bits are in common. And then that one is not. That one is because the third bit from the right, they're all zero. So we mark it as one. And then the last two bits, they are either zero or one. So they're not in common. Okay, so that's basically the basis of your mask. So you can pick the mask that looks exactly just like that. Or if you want to keep things simple, then we can do the mass that uh, looked like this. So one, zero, zero. So only the third bit from the right that matters. And as long as that bit is zero for the attribute flags on the links, those links will be candidates. So any other bits other than the third bit from the right can be any values because those mass will basically tells the tunnel to ignore them. The easiest Affinity values and mass for this scenario is probably just make the value or affinity values of zeros and then we just concentrate on the mass itself and have the third bit from the right set to one because that's the bit that's mattered and that is basically a hex value of four. Okay, so right there that would be your value and that would be your mass right there. Okay, so now let's go back and reconfigure our attribute list for tunnel 2 path 3 okay so MPLS traffic engineering LSP attribute I think we call it TU2 path 3 okay we can always do a list just to see what are contains under that attribute list you can see currently affinity value is 1 and 1 we're going to change that to zero and for the mask the task said we cannot use the mass of zero we're going to use it a mass of four okay enter you can see as soon as we enter that the 
tunnel interface for tunnel 2 came up. And now if we do show MPLS, traffic engineering, tunnel, tunnel 2. You see now that the tunnel 2 can again utilize the path option 3 and it's able to go through the router R3, R4, and then R2. Okay, now that the affinity value and mass has been adjusted to take the link between R1 and R3 into the path calculation consideration. Okay, now just to verify that the tunnel will be able to utilize the shorter path, which is through R4 and then R2, uh, when the link between R1 and R4 recovered, let's go ahead and do a no shut on fast 0114, no shut. Okay, and then don't forget to do a reoptimization or force the reoptimization if you don't want to wait until the timeout expires. And now if you go back and take another look at our tunnel 2, okay, you can see that the tunnel 2 is now taking a shorter path, which is directly to R4 and then R2 which means that we have met our task requirement. And that should complete our task number three. Okay, so what you've seen in this lab is how to gain a beta control as far as how the path for the tunnel is calculated and how to use the attribute like priority to give a one tunnel higher priority than the other in case your network resources are limited. And also we've seen the flexibility of using the affinity attributes with the attribute flags on the link to see which link can be considered as a candidate link for the path, although the concept might be a little difficult to understand. And hopefully the examples that we have in this video kind of clarify the concept for you a little better. And as far as auto bandwidth feature, those are great features that would help you save bandwidth that you might have unnecessarily reserved but not use when you define the reservable bandwidth in the tunnel statically. But you probably don't want the bandwidth calculations to happen too often, otherwise your tunnel might be moving around all the time while the router is trying to optimize the path for the tunnel in your network. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS, TE, LSP attributes and attribute lists. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.